everyone. Welcome back to Alfred's Basic Adult Piano Course, Lesson Book Level 1. This is Lesson 40, which covers page 45 in our book, Eighth Notes and the Song, Happy Birthday to You. All right, so in the previous lesson, 39, we did the song Good Morning to You back on page 44, and I was telling you all how this was really important because um, Happy Birthday to You is practically... The same piece of music note for note except there are some new rhythms in happy birthday that you're going to learn some really important rhythms um so important in fact that in this lesson you're going to rethink and actually redo in a sense how you count music um whenever you see a piece of music that has eighth notes in it you're actually going to count in a different method. It, it's actually a really good method, and it really breaks things down even better. So the old method was just counting, if you had four beats in a measure, one, two, three, four. If you had three beats in a measure, one, two, three. And if you had two beats in a measure, one, two. So let's talk first about what eighth notes actually are. Now at the top there in the pink box on the left, it says here that eighth notes are usually played in pairs. That's not always true, but typically it is. And so you think about a quarter note and what it looks like. It's, it's darkened in the, the oval, and it has a stem, which is that line that extends either up or down. But if you take two quarter notes like side by side and draw a beam across the top of them to join them, so in that pink box, the two eighth notes there, you see the top line that's horizontal that connects them. That's called the beam. And that creates two eighth notes. They're beamed together. Um, now, two eighth notes are equal to one quarter note. So that means individually, each eighth note is half the value of a quarter note. So this is where some math comes into play in, in fractions, actually. So a quarter note is one beat. So what is one half of one? Uh, you could think about a pie. Um, if you have an entire pie being one, and I cut it in half, and I got two pieces. So think of those as your two eighth notes, a half and another half. So... How would we count that? So like I said, the quarter note we were counting as one beat. So you have to split, you're splitting the beat into two halves. And the way we count each of those halves is one and. So when you say one, you're actually saying the first half of beat one. When you say and, you're talking about the second half of beat one. So you got your first half of the pie, and your second half of the pie. When you combine those two halves, you have your entire pie. You have one beat. So two eighth notes, one and. So if I play them on the piano, how do we know they're eighth notes? Well, obviously you can see it in the sheet, sheet music, but to someone else, how would you convey that? Well, in relation to the other rhythms you play, but if you count out loud, and I'm just going to go with middle C right now, one and, that tells us that we just played two eighth notes. But if I don't count out loud, there's no way of knowing what I just played. Those could be two quarter notes. It could be one, two. So if I count out loud one, two, that's two quarter notes. But if I count out loud one and, now I'm saying those are eighth notes. So if we're counting those eighth notes in halves by, you know, using one and, that will affect everything else in the music. So, for example, when I do have a quarter note, let's say beat two of whatever I'm playing is a quarter note. So beat one is two eighth notes, and I'm going one and. Now, if beat two, I want to do a quarter note. Remember, the quarter note is the whole beat. Okay, the whole beat, the whole pie. Both halves 
tied together as one. But I still have to honor those two halves. So what that means is that when I do the quarter note now, I'm gonna say two and. But you see, I held it down. I, I'm not breaking them up into individual pieces. I tied them together, two and, but I'm still acknowledging both halves. So I hope that makes sense. So beat one, let's say, is two eighth notes. Beat two is a quarter note. It'll go like this, one and, two and. So you can see in the pink box how you write the and. Um, I prefer to use a plus sign. Uh, I think it was just the way I was taught. A plus sign sometimes can mean an and as well. So when you're writing your counting down in music, um, a plus sign is just much easier to write. It's just a little cross. Um, so that's what I recommend, just doing a plus sign. Um, in the uh, above happy birthday to you, it says clap or tap these notes counting aloud. So let's look at that. You're in three, four time, three beats per measure. Notice the first measure has three quarter notes. So in the past, we would have gone one, two, three. But look at your next measure. You can't go one, two, three. You need to honor and speak all those individual eighth notes you're playing. So the first measure, you actually, I'm going to stick with middle C, you're actually going to count it this way. One and, two and, three and. That's you will play, how you will play those quarter notes. Again, one and two and three and the next measure goes like this one and two and three and now listen to what those two measures sound like back to back when i'm not counting out loud so you heard the notes in the second measure are twice as fast as the notes in the first measure. So an eighth note is twice as fast as a quarter note because it's only half the value of a quarter note. So let's do that one more time, counting out loud from the very beginning. One and, two and, three and, one and, two and, three and. And then of course they have a repeat sign to do it again. So it, it comes down to this. When you see a piece of music that has eighth notes in it, and unfortunately, sometimes it may just be a couple, but especially now in the beginning when you're learning eighth notes for the first time, you have to use the and system. Uh, at least that's what I call it. So that means now everything that you play, every rhythm, you need to not just count one, two, three, if it's three, four time, but one and, two and, three and. Now, if you have a really fast song, they might become a tongue twister. You're going one and, two and, three and, one and, two and, three and. There will come a point where you could drop the ands once you've memorized how the rhythm goes. But when you're first learning, uh, don't do that because that spells disaster later on if you don't learn this correctly here in the beginning, here and now. So let's compare happy birthday to good morning to you. So go ahead and have both pages here ready to go. So back on page 44, remember, good morning to you was also in 3-4 time. But the first measure, which is a pickup uh, measure, or an incomplete measure, had a quarter note on beat 3. But look at the first two notes of happy birthday to you. It's still the same G in the bass clef, but it's split. That quarter note is split into two halves, two eighth notes. So they can be played twice as fast. So when I count that on happy birthday to you, that's going to be three and. Now on the previous song, Good Morning to You, I just had to do three because there were eight, no eighth notes. But even if there aren't any eighth notes, I could still go three and. So I'm honoring both halves, but realizing that the quarter note, three and, ties them together. So listen to the first line now of, of Good Morning to You. Now listen to the first line of happy birthday to you. So I have those eighth notes in the very beginning 
in the left hand. I have those eighth notes at the very end of that line in the left hand. You can hear how they went twice as fast. So if I'm looking at just the bass clef in Happy Birthday to You, and I'm going to count it, it's going to go like this. Three and one and two and three and one and two and three and. Notice the half note on the last measure. The half note is two beats. So if we go back to pies, that's two pies. Here's one pie, beat one. Here's another pie on beat two. And remember, we're honoring halves now. So you've got two halves of the first pie and two halves of the second pie. So that's one and two and. But all together. So, I mean, uh, I'm not, <laughs> trying to think about putting two pies together. You, I guess it can be done. Two pies together with four halves. One and two and. So you still got to honor the half of the beat. So remember, beat one is the first half. Uh, I'm sorry, saying one is the first half, saying and is the second half. Saying two is the first half of beat two, saying and is the second half of beat two. Now, when you put the hands together in that measure, you have your left hand coming in on one and, and then the right hand comes in on two and. And I'm still holding that left hand, by the way. And then notice the two eighth notes, three and. So same music as Good Morning to You, but wherever you see the eighth notes in Happy Birthday to You, um, there were previously quarter notes in Good Morning to You that we've now split into two halves. So there's not really anything new other than eighth notes to learn when it comes to Happy Birthday to You. So what I want to do is I'm going to play Good Morning to You first, and then I'm going to play Happy Birthday to You. You're going to hear it's the exact same piece of music except for the eighth notes. So here's Good Morning to You first. Listen to Happy Birthday. So you can hear it's the exact same thing note for note. It's just the rhythms are a little different because of the eighth notes. Now, when you play music, you know that you have to keep a steady beat. You have to keep steady rhythms. When I play the second measure of Happy Birthday, those are steady quarter notes, right? You heard how they're all equal. I'm not going... You hear that's not steady, that's not equal. Same thing for two eighth notes. And the reason I'm saying this is we all know Happy Birthday. We've sung it how many times? A lot of us did not sing it the same way that it's printed in this music. You're probably going to be tempted to do this. Did you hear it? I made the first eighth note longer than the second one. That's actually not eighth notes. That's a different rhythm, a rhythm we're going to learn much later on. So don't think you just know, oh, happy birthday, I know it, I'm going to play it. Be very careful about that because that will get you in trouble very early on with these eighth notes. Eighth notes have to be even. They Both of those have to be equal. Remember, it's two halves of a pie. It's not, it's not two thirds of a pie and one third of a pie, right? It's two halves, equal halves, three and not three and one. That's not the same rhythm. But that's how Happy Birthday has been sung. So this is not uncommon for music. You may see something in print. It's very different than what you've heard. So it's, there are different arrangements, variations. How you're going to master music is recognizing when something in print is different than something you've heard. Understanding it. Um, once you understand it, 
and you recognize it and you know the difference, then you have the choice of going and playing it like this. But you need to be, able, be aware that you're doing that on purpose, not on accident. So when you do these eighth notes, it has to be even, three and, one and. So if you're ever in doubt, make sure you're counting out loud. But I always stop and say, how would I count that if I'm not playing? Would I go three and one? No, I would go three and one. No one counts really unevenly. You don't go one, two, three, four, five. You go one, two, three. Same thing with the ands. One and two and three and. Maybe you go faster, maybe you go slower. Like one and two and. But you heard that was even. So three and one and two and. Every time you get to these eighth notes, by the way, and happy birthday to you, fortunately, they're always on beat three. The last measure on the first line, that's beat three. The second measure on the second line, that's beat three. The first measure on the bottom line, that is also beat three in the right hand. So at least in this song, it's always gonna be on three and, where you're gonna encounter the eighth notes. What I recommend is you go through the music and above the very first eighth note in the beginning, you write a three. Above the second eighth note, you write an and. Again, I like the plus sign. The next measure on that quarter note, write one and. The next quarter note, two and. The last quarter note, three and. I would write out the count for the entire song. Then you have that visual right there that lines up with each note. And when you see that, it'll probably make it a lot more even. All right, so that's the big takeaway from this lesson. It's not so much the song Happy Birthday, it's eighth notes. Because here on out, we're going to be using them. And most piano music uses eighth notes. And that's going to change our counting system. Instead of one, two, three, we're using the and system. One and two and three and. Breaking it down by halves. So again, don't give in to what you're familiar with with Happy Birthday. Forget the tune. Break it down and just read the notes and play the notes. Make sure the eighth notes specifically are very even. Otherwise, there's nothing new to be learned here. It's just like good morning to you. So get very familiar with the eighth notes because our next lesson, we're going to turn the page and see that there's a pretty nice piece of music that has quite a bit of them. So you definitely don't want to go on until you understand the evenness and the importance of doing that with eighth notes. All right, so good luck on this one, and I will see you in the next lesson.